from the church. Dear Miss Lowe and Miss Mason, it is incumbent on me to once again impose on you to come to the aid of our Methodist Church in South Africa. I am praying you would be approachable to the idea of assisting with the establishment of a school in the developing settlement of Peter Maritzburg, Natal. The education of the colony's boys and girls so that they may be instructed in the proper, in the proper manner, manner is, of the is of the utmost importance. We are in a position to offer you board and lodging and we have secured you safe passage on the next ship leaving port in two months hence, in anticipation of your acceptance. I am honoured, fathers and brethren, your servant in the Lord, Reverend G. W. Rogers. Oh, thank the Lord, we're going back again. It was 125 years ago, in 1898, that Miss Emily Lowe and Miss Emma Mason answered the call to start Epworth School in Peter Maritzburg, South Africa, instilling the motto, Fida Humana Forte. Light to me means spiritual awakening, nurturing the candlelight that every person has in their heart and encouraging them to shine it brighter and brighter. So if we think back to the, the formation of the school in 1898 formally, the Methodist Church must have seen this wonderful opportunity in this town of Peter Maritzburg that was blossoming and flourishing, an emerging town, and decided to plant this educational institution. And they would never have imagined that this light would now be continuing 125 years later and, and look at what they've achieved. All I know is it's been around for a very long time, at least 125 years. When I think of 125 years, I just think of Obviously that is a long time and for Epworth to be able to like stand for that many years through world wars, through the Great Depression and for Epworth to just really still exist, that's what I think of when I think of 125 years. My mind was like, Yo! I was so shocked that the school was 125. Well, we're certainly celebrating 125 years of the most amazing history um, everything that Epworth has provided surely shows in all 125 years of its pupils, its staff and everyone it's influencing. I have felt, certainly just in, um, obviously just more recently, the passing of, of one of the heads, that sense of wow um, of the people that came before me. Um, but yes, it, it is standing on the shoulders of giants really. Epworth teaches you to give off your light because you are a light in God's world when anyone says light to me, I think you give off light, you are good. To me, light means joy. I think light is reflected in the pupils. It's reflected just in the way that you see pupils just happy and even if they aren't happy, but just like being there for each other. I think that's what light means to me. Definitely with our two founders being women, I think that is really emphasized in our school and in our activities and how just the girls in the space are encouraged to find themselves and to let that shine. I remember when I was in school, we would always get an old girl to come back to speech day and it always struck me that Epworth didn't ever have to outsource somebody else, but one of their very own girls to, to come and and showcase what they have done and come and inspire other girls at the school and I think that that is so important because we're using our own products to continue producing amazing, amazing women. women, yeah. And I think the alumni is just full of influential women and so change makers yeah. in our society. Yeah. I definitely know that even over the past five years the history of Epworth has become a lot more profound to me. Particularly this year we've been taught a lot about our past principles, the reasons that our boarding houses are named the way they are, the reasons for our old house names, all of those kind of things. Epworth is a progressive history and I think that that's something that we really cherish here. Epworth, having swelled by 1926 to as much as 186 pupils and under the guidance of then headmistress Miss Ellen Church, foresaw a growing problem with the school should it continue to swell and prosper. And Miss Church responded by making weekend sojourns into the surrounding countryside in search of a solution. Having expanded successfully within the confines of the town to numerous scattered locations, 
I wish rather to propose we relocated entirely to a new, spacious country setting in Scottsville to the south. I regularly take the pupils there to enjoy the outdoors and felt this location would be absolutely ideal to the purposes of building Epworth on grounds of its own. And out we moved to the country to a lot of criticism. You know, how on earth do you think you're going to survive out in the country as a school? And this was just a patch of vacant grass, no, no buildings, it was very stark. And we remain a school boasting 15 hectares of space, 40 acres of space in suburbia. Well, I know that Epworth started in town and we moved here eventually and then our campus expanded. We didn't always own the bottom prep school. And I know that the original buildings are all the main school block at the moment, which is everything that's painted in white, including the front office, senior house, all the labs and everything underneath it. So that's the original school building. Ms. Susie Kachelhofer became principal in 1953, and Ms. Kachelhofer, now she wasn't a milk tat and cook sisters person, she was so progressive, but an absolutely staunch Methodist, and she championed the chapel. I am resolute in my conviction that we, as a Methodist place of learning, would only benefit if we were to erect our own on-site chapel. As such, I am hoping you will be able to advise us on how we go about raising the necessary funds for such a sanctuary. It is my sincere wish that our school in the country, through this endeavour, allow the girls and their families a place of peaceful refuge and religious reflection. I absolutely love the Epworth Chapel. It's where I grow, it's where I flourish. The shape of the cross in the centre of the campus is just so significant to me in a sense that you can tell, even from Google Maps above, that Epworth centres their schooling around the Methodist ethos. You know, we're being very intentional about saying that at the heart of our school is faith, is our belief in God. During the 60s, the numbers of junior school pupils grew and it was recognised that they needed a dedicated building for themselves. And after 1966, the primary school has blossomed and produces the most beautiful, joyous children. When I first got to the school, I wasn't sure if people would like me and I was nervous and stuff, but as soon as I got here, everyone was so kind. And then I just started thinking there's no need to be nervous and then everyone just became my friend. Boys have always been a part of Epworth. In the beginning, in the kindergarten days, and then later in the 60s when the school grew, more and more boys came to Epworth. And now there's a healthy mix of boys and girls at the prep school. If you look the world around, co-ed is, is quite an important aspect of education. Our boys who leave us tend to do very well at the other schools that they go to um, and we often get feedback about how well they've done on the sporting field, cultural, academic. Um, so we lay a good basis and a good foundation for all of that. I think Epworth has always been a school that has been ready to you know, make the first step and for Epworth to um, introduce black students into their system, I think is one significant change. I think that led other schools to being able to make that step as well. This was the first time I ever had a black friend because it was apartheid and we were totally separated from, the races were separated. From that point of view, that was very profound for me. That decision cost us financially. We lost our government subsidy and indeed we perhaps lost some favour that we were happy to lose. I think it instilled values in the pupils at the time of being able to be the one to make the first move and you know having courage to do what might not be popular at the time. The knock-on effect of Epworth's political rebellion by the board, coupled with financial pressure from extensive expansion of the school in the prior decades, meant that Epworth had arrived at a position in 1979 of huge financial distress. 
a very dark point in their history. There was a real risk that the school may even have to close its doors. And we came to the arrangement, we said, why don't we offer to purchase the two schools, Kersney College could get involved from the Methodist Church for the amount of Epworth's indebtedness to them. Okay. As a result, uh, Epworth now they belongs to the, the, the past girls and Kersney College belongs to the Kersney College old boys. Yeah. Mm. That Methodist heart was certainly what rose in the 1980s. We did not believe the world could afford to lose an Epworth. You know, Epworth doesn't shy away from, from speaking about issues of empowerment, issues of subjugation and people who have been disenfranchised. You know, Epworth goes back into its past and it um, reflects on it and it grapples with it and it takes us forward having difficult conversations because they're important. It's a special school and I think that my family having been here, I think it's sort of ingrained in us that we want to follow in, in the footsteps of everybody else that have been before because we've all appreciated the values that Epworth has given us. Epworth has weathered 125 years very, very successfully in all departments with outstanding staff and outstanding pupils. It still remained Epworth and, and people who get together from way back who've been here still have that same sort of feeling, that same connection, that same sort of bond. You really are encouraged to be yourself and explore how you can be the best of who you are. I'm so proud that Epworth is the one school that has the word worth oh, yes. in its name because is that not the bedrock of everything? I'm not sure that the world always sees us positively, I'm going to be quite honest, in that at times we viewed as the country bumpkins almost. But we're actually quite proud of that, in that we pride ourselves in being humble, authentic, down to earth. It's a very healthy environment to experience as a young woman. You've got the rest of your life to experience the toughness of things, but here it's about building that sense of self, and I, and I, and I think boarding schools do that in a, in a profound way. And, and I think you, you leave here um, knowing that you had a rich experience as opposed to, I just attended a school. So yeah, that's important for me. And it's just a place of comfort, even though it is a school, I still feel like it's my comfort space. I think it's been 125 years because Epworth knows how to do it right. We've got the right facilities, the right teachers, the right sense of community with each other. I think religion, or if I can call it rather faith, is something that every human being needs to have. They teach us how to be honest, teach us about God and Jesus, and they teach us how to be respectful and kind to others. Faith, compassion and courage has been important to Epworth since the very beginning of Epworth, 125 years ago. So I like to think that at Epworth we are always celebrating and what we celebrate is the, the idea that we're all on a journey together, but that we're part of something so much greater than ourselves as individuals. We celebrate the fact that in this time and space we get to be part of this much greater community, this much greater picture. If I were to meet the founders of Epworth, I would, before I even ask any questions, I would say thank you for setting the foundation of Epworth so well. But I can tell you now, hand on heart, that those two ladies would be able to walk up our driveway and say, the reason we started the school is still being manifested. And they would be able to enter our chapel realizing that they began a school and to this day it adheres to the fact that where you can connect as a community and pray together, you will stay together. Our school song at Epworth is O Joyful Light and there's a line that gets me every time and it is, Lo, having thee we lose not one another. And there's a beautiful sense of us as an as a Epworth family, Epworth community being united past, present and future by our journey with this institution, um, the history that we share, the faith that we share, and the light that we share. In my years at Epworth, what has stayed with me most is the ever-present effect that our message of light and worth has on each and every pupil. As I leave the school, this is what I most hope, wish and believe will be the character of the school that survives 
another 125 years. I mean, you think of light, you have to think obviously of the other side of that dichotomy, which is darkness. You can't really have one without the other. And so we think about Epworth providing us with something that is holistic and nuanced and real. We think about it teaching us about light and darkness, walking into that darkness and embracing it until we find light. So I think light is one of the greatest gifts that Epworth gives to anybody. We are a school that has to keep going.